Right. Introduce myself as your grandpa or something? Or something? <laughs> no. no. This is my neighbor. Okay. All right. Okay. My name is Michael Cooperson. I'm Maddie's neighbor. Okay. Okay. I'm um, going to help her get, a, get an A or whatever it is. <laughs> I'm going to ask you a series of questions and you answer according to your opinion. Okay. In the 1920s, we went through the Great Depression. Do you believe this could happen again? Why or why not? Well, I think we learned the lesson through that. We never thought it could happen. But we found out it could happen, so I think in the future we can prepare so this will not happen again. We'll have some hard times, but I think we'll be able to make it. Okay. Did anyone in your family or you serve in World War II? If so, did they tell you about the war? World War II? No, no. I was, a, I was not in World War II. Or none of my friends or any were involved in World War II, no. Um, how do you feel about the Cold War? Should it have happened at all in your eyes? <laughs> and does it really matter who is democratic or a communist? Why or why not? Wow. Well, I think uh, I, I think we, we should not use the word communist anymore. I mean, even though I, I'm against communism, I feel like, uh, uh, how should I say it? This cold war we got to approach is that yeah, I I don't think we should we have the money to support these wars that we're ha having at the present time. Every time we go to war, it costs us more and more money, and we just we just we just can't afford it. So uh, and I don't think we'll ever have peace because people even our neighbors we just can't maybe communicate. They have their ideas, we have our ideas, and as I as I in the workforce, I noticed that. No two, uh, we, we can't agree on anything. Okay? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you or anyone in your family serve in the Korean War? If so, did they tell you about it, and how did it affect you or your family? Well, at the time of the Korean War, I was maybe 16, 17 years old, and my brother-in-law was involved in the Korean War and I saw his reactions where he he came home after he after serving in the war he had nightmares and would get up screaming in the middle of the night and it left a deep impression on myself that uh, our government was not taking care of our per personnel that we were serving at the war at that time that's what I feel so yeah that's happened to me and my family too. They they're all affected yeah. in the worst ways. Yeah. Um, growing up, did you have African American students in any of your classes? If so, did you like or dislike it, and why? Well, no, I didn't just like being working with the uh, uh, Afri <coughs> African American uh, students. Uh, we learned to get along, and. Uh, it, it would seem in grammar school we were not the affected, but when we went to high school, there were more and more different neighbors going to high school. So it didn't affect me. We all got along, and uh, I, in fact, it, it gave me a better understanding what the black people were about. You know, and I, I had some good friends, and to this day, I have some good black friends that I don't consider them being Afro Afro American, but uh, they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, do you remember the Little Rock Nine? If so, were you for or against integration in schools, and why? No, no, I never felt that way. I just, I went to school to get my diploma, and uh, I felt that uh, I could get along with anybody. That if, they, if they left me alone, I, I didn't care. You know, I, I was there for one purpose, to learn and graduate and go my way. How did the death riots affect you when you have the option not to answer this question? Uh, I don't remember them. <laughs> That's a good way to get by them, yeah. 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 Um, do you remember when President John F. Kennedy was killed? What were your feelings toward it? Where were you and what were you doing when you found out? And did you watch his funeral on TV? Yes, I watched his funeral. I saw his son carrying the... Uh, the, 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 the bouquet at the, at the end there, was, it was a very touching scene, 
And uh, it was the middle of the day. I was I was uh, working during my uh, summer, summer vacation from school, and it was uh, someone told me that that person Kenny was shot. I couldn't believe it. And then later on, I found out it was they weren't fooling, and uh, yeah, it left an impression on me. And then uh, when when his brother Bobby Kenny got, got shot, I I even felt the same way again. I said, Boy, they sure didn't like the, the Kennedys because they were, I guess they were oh, trying to get rid of all these unions and every all these all these politicians, so they were a threat to the, the mobsters, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you remember the 1968 Democratic Convention in Chicago? What was this convention about, and how do you feel about the riots that broke out after? Were you scared of black power? Why or why not? No, no, I just, uh, it was just uh, surprising that people started uprising. I mean, this was not a common thing when I was going, uh, growing up that people would, uh, would be against uh, the, 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 the government like they have been and recently now. It, it seems like they, people are getting more like the situation uh, last week with the North Atlantic uh, Treaty uh, Organization in town. I don't see why they should be demonstrating that much. I mean, and they were getting forceful. It was not peaceful demonstrating. And uh, I can't see, uh, it's just uh, unbelievable that people aren't peaceful anymore. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, what was the convention about? Because I don't know much about it. It was a democratic convention. And uh, uh, it was uh, at the National Amphitheater on, on uh, Halstead and 42nd. And it just seemed that they didn't want the people to get involved with their party at that time, so uh, it was just the, the protesters, a bunch of protesters wanting just to make a, make a splash that they, they were powerful or something, but to me it was just a bunch of propaganda. Sounds yeah. like it. Uh, do you remember when Martin Luther King was killed? What were your feelings toward <laughs> it? What were you doing when you found out about it? I remember when he was killed, but uh, I don't know. I, I, all I can remember about Martin Luther King, I mean, he had a dream, <laughs> and uh, he just wasn't successful at it. That's it. I mean, and uh, I'm not much involved with politics. I just, I got my own uh, people I feel for. If I don't understand who I'm going to vote for, I usually uh, follow what, what the newspaper suggests, you know. <laughs> right now, I'm not happy with with the Republicans uh, slate, so I'm still hoping that maybe Obama will make it. I don't know. Do you think Martin Luther King made a difference? Well, you know, he, he, he got a, uh, they got a day named after him, and now <laughs> yeah, he made a difference. He made another holiday. That, that, that much is true. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you remember the Vietnam War? Were you or your family affected? If so, how? No, I, no, Vietnam, no, that, no. Did you hear about there, it? There are so many wars, I can't keep them straight. <laughs> <laughs> I have to, I don't know whether I, I, I went in service after the Korean War or before the Vietnam War. No, I, I went in after the Vietnam War, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, so, okay. What no, war I, were you involved in? I was a peaceful action, and my, mine was a peace. I went there for uh, three years, and, uh, we were just uh, uh, a peace. We were at peace at that time. We were between wars. What two wars? What two wars were you between? Well, it, it was after the Korean War and uh, Vietnam. Okay, it was after the Vietnam War too. Yeah, yeah. It was like in 1950, 55, 55 when in 55. Yeah, I was I was stationed in Germany for three years. Wow. Yeah. I never knew that about you. <laughs> yeah, I was overseas. I was a paratrooper. How did that affect you now? No, nothing. I didn't have any injuries. I can I went. I went in. I, uh, there were racial problems between people from the south and people from from the north. We had we had fights and racial problems, and uh, and it was just like one gang after another gang in, in the service at that time. You didn't belong to one group of people. I, which I try to stay away from everybody. In fact, I was, I was having so much trouble, they made a cook out of me. I had so much KP, they made me a cook. <laughs> yeah.
What'd you cook? <laughs> I'm just wondering. What'd I cook? <laughs> well, I was, uh, I, I know the cooks went AWOL. If they, they sent them to cook school in Germany, they sent them to France to cook school, but they wouldn't send me because they knew I was going to go AWOL, so. Mm -hmm. uh, I, was, I was in charge of the kitchen, and I did get, in, I did get into a lot of trouble, but uh, forget about that part. It was peaceful action at that time, but... What trouble did you get into? <laughs> uh, well, there was a time when, uh, uh, on Sunday mornings, it was a, you, you didn't have to get up for ch for a chow hall, but there was always those few that you had to get up because they wanted to have breakfast. There was only about five people, out of 200 people, five people would show up on Sunday morning. These would be the chow hogs. Uh, chow hounds, whatever you want to call them, because you, no matter how drunk they were from Saturday night, they always were there to eat their breakfast and everything else. So one day I had food covering and I, I dyed the eggs green, and then I had a French toast were like pink <laughs> from the food coloring, and I made all different. I made all different concoctions, thinking I could make them puke because they were all drunk anyway. You know, the guys that would come in there. So the captain happened to come in that morning. He caught me at this stuff. So there I was on KP again. So oh gosh, yeah, so troublemaker, huh? Troublemaker. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you remember Watergate? Do you think President Nixon should have been charged and arrested instead of being allowed to resign? Why or why not? Well, it, it was. I, I felt that if, if he didn't resign, he would be arrested. So that he got out of it that way. You know, and he, he, that's when he was a water uh, wiretapping uh, people conversations, which people were uh, were uh, unaware of. So I don't think it's right to do things like that. So if he if he would have stayed uh, as a president, he would have been impeached. If he got out, then he uh, well he. Then he was uh, he wouldn't go to jail, so <laughs> yeah. So you think he just kind of slid by? Yeah, he he got lucky. Uh, what do you think is the reason we entered into war with Iraq? Do you think the <laughs> government is purposely keeping us there? Why or why not? I I think Governor Bush wanted to make an impression at that time, and uh, I don't know. It just. Hard to get out of uh, get, uh, get out of war. What you have war? It's all politics for some reason. And it's being the United States, Roy's involved. Roy's there to help support other countries, and Roy getting our troops all over to Af uh, Afghanistan. And right now in Afghanistan, we shouldn't be in this war because Russia's been fighting with these people for the last hundred years, and they still haven't won. So <coughs> I think it's a waste of time that Afghanistan war. Do you think we should just be able to leave and let bygones be bygones? <laughs> it's hard for countries to get along with each other. I don't know. I mean, we had this summit here this month. I, I don't know what was accomplished here at this time. I, I, I don't know if anything was accomplished. Afghanistan was a big issue in the city, from what I understand. Yeah, it was. Now, this is something I remember. Oh, good. What were your feelings toward 9-11? Where were you and what were you doing when you found out about it? And do you believe a terrorist attack will happen again soon? Why or why not? <laughs> we're, yeah. What I think of 9-11, that was a very, very punishing blow to the United States, which we thought would never happen because of all the wars were fought, fought, fought on war in foreign soil. And this was the first time they, they came this close to our country. And the, how much damage they, they, they did at that time, and they're always aware of the people that, that still are resisting going to airport security, taking their shoes off and things like that, like that. but things like this can happen again if we're not careful, because we're always catching somebody with a underclothing bomb or something and on the airline, so I, I think we have to keep our toys on our toes, because I feel that... Uh, they want to come to our country and do some damage and leave a mark here. Do you think it's right that we did a counterattack on them? Uh, oh yeah, when they got the uh, yeah, Os Osama bin Laden, yeah. That, that, that I think that was the right thing to do. That's because the next question. Do you remember when Osama bin Laden was killed? What yes. were your feelings toward it? Great, good, good, good. 
some people just uh, disagreed with that, but I, I think it was a good idea. And then, because uh, it's the, he, they get rid of him, they got another person in charge now. So they, it's going down the line. They still want to make an impression. Now that we kill a, 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 a Bin Laden, I think they're, trying, they're even more trying to get into our country and do some more damage. But why do you think it took us so long to find him? <laughs> no one would tell where, where he was at. I mean, if, if we if we knew where he was at, we would have got him sooner. But they had a they had a plan and make sure that they they could get in there and out. And they didn't even let the, when they found out they didn't even let the country that they were going to go into know about it because they felt that they might have told him or something. I don't know. Um. <clears throat> Do you remember when the media showed the execution of Saddam Hussein? What were your feelings towards <laughs> that, and did you watch it? I didn't watch it. I didn't watch <coughs> it. All I heard was the hearsay about how they had him in the middle of the the the, the, the village or the, the main street, and how they were all posing with his body over there. Or, I don't know. So. Do you think that shows dishonor against our troops? Dishonor against our troops? By making a mockery of it. Yeah. I don't think our troops were making a mockery out of it. I, I think uh, they were making a mockery out of it. Yeah, they were taking photographs of it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What are your opinions of what happened this weekend with NATO? Are you surprised to find it was being held in Chicago? And why do you think so many riots broke out because of it. Well, uh, what I've been reading in the paper, I mean, this is something that just happened, and uh, the police were very clever, uh, they, they, they had a plan, they were able to move around and uh, and keep <coughs> keep, uh, keep uh, the damage down, and we, we didn't have any, much damage. They caught a lot of uh, terrorists, like the Bridgeview incident in Bridgeview, you know, Bridgeport, they caught these people in this house that uh, we're going to uh, do damage to Mayor uh, Emanuel's home or uh, threaten his life and other people and I feel I, I feel the police did a good job it showed it showed America that we're capable of having events here and keeping them under control mm -hmm. and, and I think it's, it, it, it brought a lot of money to the villa to the, the city and uh, they, they had enough money uh, given to them by different organizations that the taxpayer weren't going to be taxed for all this additional security that the police had to provide, so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you think our government should reinstate drafting for the military to reinforce our forces? <laughs> <laughs> why or why not? Well, I was... I was either drafted, I, at the time when I was at, at that age, I, I, I was waiting to be drafted, but the, at that time, in order to get a job, everybody was afraid to hire you because you were too close to the draft. They, if they trained you to, into a position, by the time they trained you, you would be, gone, uh, be drafted and going to the service, so you couldn't, uh, you, you'd, you'd wind up with a mediocre job because no one wanted to train you at that time. And I think they should have a draft, uh, bring the draft back, because nobody wants to volunteer anymore. Yeah, yeah, I think they should bring the draft back. Yeah. It wasn't bad for me, I, I survived, so. But so many people have been killed. Yeah. yeah. Or do you think the age group should be changed, not so young? Uh, I think, uh, the, well, the age group at that time was, yeah, I had to be 18 at that time. You had to be graduated high school because I know I, they would recruit at the schools all the time when you graduated and then finish your college education in the service, GI Bill and all that. And that, I think that would be the way because now with the GI Bill and uh, with the, uh, all these student loans that they can't pay back, uh, people are graduating from college and, and they're in debt already. and. Uh, uh, it's getting pretty hard to pay these debts back, there, these student loans. In fact, the student loans are higher than the mortgage rates. Yeah, yeah they are. Yeah. Uh, do you think more women should be brought into our military forces? Uh, I'm for no. No. I think more women should be at home because 
women, women I, 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 I don't think should be carrying these heavy uh, radios on their back and things on this order. And uh, and then again, they would feel like, uh, hey, if, if you're in the military, you should be doing this. Like, I had a job, and we're both uh, the woman and I were both getting for the same salary, but she couldn't do the heavy load. They, they gave me the heavy load, so. I think women shouldn't be in the cities. They, they, they usually get raped and everything else. I mean, there's always some type of problem with women and, and men in, in the same area or barracks or making separate. <laughs> I mean, at the time I was in the service, it was all men. There was no women involved at all. I mean, they, they were in a different level or a different place, but no, I don't think they should be, uh, yeah. Maybe clerical work, but that, that, that's about it, you know? More nursing too. Yeah, though. more. They're going to uh, women be for the clerical work in that order. Mm -hmm. uh, do you? Who do you think was our best president, and why? <laughs> <laughs> our best president. I think John F. Kennedy was uh, when he was going there. He was going to move in the right direction, but then they was a. Yeah, they they felt that. Uh, he, he spoke. I think he spoke. To Truth and I liked him a lot, but uh, it just seemed the unions were th threatened by his power, and they, they they assassinated him. Then his brother took over, and he he wanted to follow in the footsteps of a uh, uh, John did, and they assassinated him too. So I felt those were the two po most powerful the people that, that, that we had as presidents. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's say you were president. <laughs> Name three changes you would like to see in our country. <laughs> Just three. Three? Well, three. so I love uh, three changes. I, well, I want them to keep Social Security. Uh, that they get a better health plan. That they could get come up with a health plan for everybody, which everybody wants a health plan. And yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah let's see, health plan. Uh, keep the Social Security. Or, yeah. Okay, yeah, uh, you know, what else is there? Uh, that's what I think is important to everybody. And, and create more jobs. People need more jobs. Every time you, the, the job rate goes up, it's all these mediocre jobs, these uh, just basic, uh, our, uh, basic salaries, uh, starting wage, like these. More people are working for McDonald's and everything else than getting into these trades. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Get rid of unions. That's what I want to do. Get rid of unions. Get rid of unions. Yeah. Uh, last question. Is there any other significant part of your life you would like to share? Like to share? Yeah. Anything else significant that you want to uh, tell the people? Uh, <laughs> uh, I tell you, I made so many same mistakes in my lifetime. I wouldn't want to do over, do it over again and make the same mistakes again. So, no. I just, want to, I just want to continue with peace and be able to walk on the street, mingle with people. And years ago, you never heard of all these shootings. Every every Friday night, uh, there's so many murders and everything going on. I I just can't understand why, what's wrong with these people have to do. And with the weather getting warmer, it seems more and more people are going outside, killing each other. Shoot on the weekends. Yeah. I feel sorry for you. Why? <laughs> You don't understand, you, you, you're at that age where you think you know it all, but there's so many things that are, you know, uh, that uh, are happening that as parents, people tell you uh, you're not supposed to do, but you have to find out the hard way, then, then you know what I mean? I hear that all the time. Yeah. <laughs> but the, and then when do you think your parents are stupid, or, and then when they, when they get to be 21, they realize how smart you got all of a sudden. After they, everything he said is true, so. Yeah. yeah. So I feel sorry for these young people going through these men are so convincing these women they're in love and everything else, and people are falling in love with the first person they they meet, and uh, it's a, it's a bit, it's a strange world out there. Yeah. Mm, yeah. What about Mrs. Cooperson? When did you meet her? When, when, when I met <laughs> Was her. Was she your first love? <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I was in when I was in Germany. I had quite a few loves over there when I was in Germany, and then I, then I came home, and 
it was a while before I met Miss Cooper. So, well, well, I think I you guys are great. We've been, <laughs> we've been married 50 years, and I feel the only way we kept each other, kept, <laughs> kept together for 50 years was after 25 years on our anniversary, I took her to Italy. And then on our 50th anniversary, I went back to Italy and brought her home. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Well, she must have had fun there for 25 years. <laughs> That's a joke there. Right? I know. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah. yeah. Well, you guys are great to be neighbors with. So. Great. You're yeah. great there? Yeah. Meg's a good neighbor. I like her, too. So, uh, you, too, you and her, too, are, are great, so. Yeah. Yeah, and the Healy's are great. We've got, we got neighbors, neighbors on both sides of us that are great, you know, so. I'm lucky. Yeah. Yeah, I'm in the middle of two good neighbors. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about the neighbor on the other side of you there. No, we won't talk about her. Uh, and now that you're driving, uh, I keep thinking that every time you park your car in front of her house, she's going to try to start calling complaining. But she don't own the street. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She does always yell at me. Yeah, she does. I know. Yeah, but, uh, there's something wrong with her, but uh, she doesn't own the street. You could park there. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. If she owns the street, then that's a situation you have, have to worry about. But after that time, how you doing with your driving, okay? Yeah, I'm good. You good? I'm good. Can you back up real good and everything else? Back oh, up? yeah, I yeah. back up the driveway. I saw you saw you facing the, the, the car facing that back, though. Yeah. Great. But you said how um, we need to create more jobs. I actually recently got laid off. You got laid off? Yes. What were you working? I didn't know you were working. Uh, I was working at Andy's Frozen Custard. Oh, okay, I, okay, I, I'm, I'm Cicero, okay. Yeah. You got laid off there, huh? Yeah. Hey, you know, how about that, uh, Overvice? They always look for help over there. Yeah, I'm going to apply. Yeah. But this is supposed to be an interview about you, so is there anything else you want to tell me? Not really, no, <laughs> I mean, I, I just, like, I, I, I like, I'm like in a shell now, I just try to go by, I go out of, like, I got myself a little job, but, you know, because I can't sit home with Helen, otherwise I get in her here. <laughs> and so, yeah, so I work a couple of days on this little job here, and, you know, and it keeps me my fishman my, my uh, money to go fishing. I just came back from a week up in uh, Wisconsin. I was up in Wisconsin all week. I came back Saturday, Saturday morning from a week up there, so, mm -hmm. yeah. That must have been nice. It was nice. So I'll put myself up there and, yeah. Yeah. Christian had a good time, so. I just, I just, every day it's the same thing. Uh, get up in the morning, go out, and huh, some people are, are looking to retire, and I, I'm just still, here I'm still working. I, I retired back in the 90, late 90s. And I was off for about uh, three weeks, and I went back to work. I said, uh, I just got bored. <coughs> He's a nervous person. I enjoy working, so. What did you do for the three weeks you were off? <laughs> Getting in Helen's hair. <laughs> yeah. So she convinced you to go back? No, she didn't convince me. I, said, I, I just wanted to, uh, to go back to work, and I found a job, and I was working three days a week, two days. In fact, this job was a better job than I had than I, when I was working full time. In fact, I got a pension. I, I worked there for 11 years, and I got a pension after that. Oh wow! Yeah. Uh, Sounds like you're doing good. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm making it. So yeah. Yeah. So. Well, I'd like to thank you for your time. <laughs> okay, you're welcome. Okay. Yeah. You're welcome. So, I'm hurry, hurry. How long were you working at Andy's? Did you got to leave off? <laughs> 